<laughs> oh my word. Whatever the price of this car is, <laughs> it's worth bought. it. It's bought. Welcome to the car guys and welcome to the Bonhams MPH March Auction. We are very excited to be the official video partner for Bonhams MPH. We're gonna take you through all of the lots that interest us so that you can bid either here in person or online or via the telephone. And if that wasn't exciting enough, we're also gonna to get to drive many of the cars here today. Oh my God almighty. <laughs> this is the best day of our lives. Welcome to the official auction preview of the Bonhams MPH March auction. We've got just under 100 lots coming up. I think what we'd like to do, especially from my point of view, because I've only ever been to one auction, is kind of we run you through what the process is, how you can bid on these vehicles. The official on-site viewing day where you can see all of these lots is Friday the 20th of March, and then auction day itself is Saturday the 21st at 1.30 p.m. GMT. To bid on this auction, you can of course use the telephone, you can be here in person if it hasn't been locked down, and of course you can bid uh, on the internet live. Down below here somewhere are the telephone numbers that you can use to bid on the day. You can bid online via the Bonhams website, www.bonhams.com, but you must also register for live bidding, and to do this, please send an email to bids at bonhams.com and put the subject matter as live bidding and then they will set you up with a live bidding account so that you can then bid on the lots on the day. Perfect. A wristwatch check, you say? Oh, oh, my pleasure. Today I am wearing the Rolex Hulk. Absolutely stunning in green. And I've got on one of my particular favorites. This is a Jarja Le Coultre. What? Sound good? Jarja Le Coultre, JLC, Deep Sea Alarm. This is the American version with the American script on it. Lovely. Okay, so now it's time to do a walk around of some of the lots here at Bonhams MPH. We're going to not only look at some of them in here in the hall, but then we're going to take a few of them outside and uh, perhaps drive them? Maybe. Drive them, maybe? So I am armed with my Bonhams MPH catalogue here, and we, as you can see already, have done what every good person buyer does when they go to an auction, and now we've tag some pages so let's have a look this is our first car that we're looking at here so this is a bit of me this is a land rover series one it's lot number 10 with an estimate between 28 and 35,000 quid now i've got the series 2a the one that comes after this this has been thoroughly restored mint condition they're highly collectible hence Hence paying 30 grand. I mean, 30 grand's a lot of money for, for this old truck. Exactly, 1957 this was made, but they are super cool. My only issue with it is because it's so perfect, it's very, very shiny. Yes. And I kind of feel like Land Rovers shouldn't be shiny, regardless of what series they are. Defenders should be covered in mud, should be a bit grubby, feel like they smell of sheep in the back, that kind of thing. It would be pretty grubby if I ever got hold of it, that's mm, for sure. That's very true. So here we have lot number 25 in this weekend's auction. This is a fully restored RS2000 Mark II Escort. Oh my God, things of childhood dreams. So one of the iconic styling details of the RS2000 on the Mark II Escort was this sharp nose with the twin headlights so this had not been seen on the mark twos before and it's a proper if you can see it coming down the road you definitely know what you're looking at i mean this car has had a complete nut and bolt restoration it was bought two years ago but what a job i mean look look this is never pristine never it wasn't pristine when it came out of the factory it's a 1977 car which means it's running the thinner black stripe across the top let's just have a quick look under the bonnet this is going to be incredible so brace yourselves Oh, look at that, <laughs> look at that. Single overhead cam, two litre Ford Pinto engine. This grin is is never going away, okay? Just let you know. <laughs> this, is this is amazing. To say this car is immaculate would be a huge understatement because this oh. is literally like coming out the factory. The interior, you know, is just 
spotless and perfect. I've but, never seen anything like this. Uh, no, and, and all of the controls are as tight as you like as well. So they've all been rebushed and fettled and it's just incredible. Oh, there's vibrations, the whole thing oh my is goodness, shaking. It's me. Steering's a little heavy. Um, I'm going to suggest no power steering at all. Welcome to the 70s. Oh, I mean, if you had this in the 70s, you were proper. I reckon you must have had a medallion. Oh yeah, all right, darling. Big chest wig. All right, sweetheart. Oh, I know, I have to be honest. I think they were main in the 70s. <laughs> I think we've got a bit lily livered. Lily livered. So it's right, it's lovely, it it's really does. It's tiny though, isn't it? Look at it. I know. Look, look, there, look, I'm touching the entire car and my Jeez. arms even aren't even extended. I rallied one of these once on one of those rally courses. Yeah. And I just remember this this screaming engine and all this sideways action yeah, going on. Yeah, loads of that. This is the car where I was in a slide and then I changed up gear mid-corner. Mid-slide? And the, and the instructor went, don't do that again. <laughs> so what do we like about this car? Uh, everything. We like everything. The condition, the shape, the looks, the smell, the interior, the handling, the engine, the quality of the engine in the engine bay, the nostalgia level, everything. And what is there anything we don't like? Brakes. Brakes are a little bit tricky. Brakes are what I would determine as old fashioned. Yeah. They are they in are period. over time. In they period. In period brakes. Yeah. So so don't go hacking up to a corner at 100 miles an hour and think you're going to stop it on a five foot because that, that, ain't, that ain't happening. Now this is 40 to 50 grand guide price. Yes. Do we think it's going to go? Yes. Yeah. I You'd mean, be mad if you were in the market for one of these and you wanted something that was of this kind of condition. Perfect. You would be mental not to be bidding on this. Then into a corner, folks. Woo! Yes. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, look at the angle oh we're getting. Goodness. Look at the angle. I mean, that's just it. You're basically U Ha Kankanen right now. Oh, good old U Ha. Hey, whoever restored this, well done. Oh, yeah. This is a uh, peach. This is a true time warp moment. Isn't it? I mean, we have just been transported back like one of those. Diddly, diddly, diddly. If you want to go back in time, this is the car. I quite like this car. Damien absolutely doesn't like this car. But, however, look at it, it looks amazing, and it's orange, and orange is always amazing, right? Yes, of course it is. This is an E10 BMW. It's a resto mod, which means that it's a, basically a body shell that someone's pulled out and done loads and loads of work to it. But I think it looks really, really cool, and it's 20 to 30 grand, no reserve. So, I mean, you could pick it up for five, potentially. This thing is gonna get sold. Get on it, it's really cool. Here you go, here's one possibly for Eagle E-Types if you want a uh, chassis. It's only done 34,000 miles. Bodywork uh, has seen better days. But lot number 29 is this 1964 E-Type Jag Coupe. Yours for just 10 to 20,000 pounds, Squire. Lot number 28 is this Ford Sierra RS Cosworth. Just an absolute amazing, iconic, piece of kit it's right? not the rs 500 no it's not want to make that clear it's not the the top level version mm. but you get sierra cosy goodness Cos, oh. cosa 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 they were produced in 1986 and 1987 only so two year run yeah so this is before it went to the saloon so this is the original cosy like the rs 2000 two liter pinto based engine but now instead of just a mere 108 brake horsepower what have we got 204 and this is old school turbocharging as well 16 valve engine aluminium head features obviously a enormous Garrett TO3 turbocharger. Yes, mm. yes. Just what you want. Turbo lag loveliness. Put your foot down, count to 10, make a <laughs> cup of tea. 145 mile an hour top speed, 0 to 60 in 6.2 seconds. This one's done 55,000 miles. Which is actually, considering 1987, that is pretty low mileage. That's pretty good. And in its original condition, right? So it's not being restored. Correct, that's what I was gonna say. It's a bit scrappy, the bodywork's got a few little scrapes in it, yeah. things like that. It's what we like to call honest. The interior is, it's not pristine, but I mean, it's, it's spectacular. It is for a 198, yeah, for a car this old, yeah. this is pretty amazing. This car cost £16,000 new. Can you imagine? Can oh. you even imagine? What kind of a king were you in 1987 to put, flop down 16 grand and you go, were, I'll have my cause with you, you please. You were proper 
proper royalty. 1987 car, this one is guided. Go on. Wait for it. Go on. 55 to 75,000 pounds. Mm, I think a trifle optimistic, perhaps that one. Trifle optimistic, but it's we shall a bit see. Toppy. One thing I would like to highlight is, of course, the stealability of these cars in period. This car here has got two immobilizers on it. Ofs. One down here, and one down there. Let's see how it handles this thing. The suspension's really hard. Let's have a look. Steering is good, though. I mean, look easily round, easily get round in front of the bank, you know, to get, yeah. your, get your mates in the back. <laughs> the turbo lag in this car is legendary. Oh, completely. Foot I'm down, foot down, here we go. Oh, oh yeah, whistle and, that turbo. And there's a whistle. And Pitch then we get to the corner. Oh. I mean, it handles really well, doesn't it? Oh. oh, still got it. Hey, you still got it. Come on. As they said with the Millennium Falcon, it's got it where it counts. Oh. Lovely. Right, your turn to drive it. All right, quick, smashing. Quick driver change. Driver change. There you go. Amazing. First ever drive of a Gotha. Is it really? Yeah, yeah, I've never I driven just, one before. I just assumed everyone in Essex drove these and, and had them. Oh my good God. Oh, that is really, isn't oh it? Oh my God. I'm in the hands of a madman. He's just jumped in it and already we're <laughs> sideways. Not it's almost like I was born to drive like that in this car, do you know? It's kind of like the Essex inbreeding in me. It's, it's in your it DNA. Is. It's in my DNA. Oh look. my God, what have I done? Why did I get in the passenger seat? I love the lightness of the front of the car so you can kind of play with it. Yeah, That's it's really, brilliant. It totally feels like you can just yeah. hang it yeah, out yeah, and totally. hold it. Full throttle, full throttle. Woo! There's the turbo. Oh. Here's the tight corner. Oh. He's going for it, ladies and gentlemen. He's going for it. Oh, it's sublime, it's just oh, epic. Check that old full stereo out. Oh, yeah. oh gorgeous. That is the thing. So, things we like about this car, well, it's a Cosé. It's a Cosé. It's white, it, you couldn't get more Essex. Huge wing, lovely steering, epic turbo lag, which is actually a good thing in this car. Yeah. Because it allows you to set it all up. Yeah. You got the whistle from the turbo. Gearbox, I think, is lovely and tight, easy yep. to operate. Yeah, for sure. Turning's fantastic. Wow. What don't we like though? Because there must be something that, that is niggling you. Well, it's a, you know it's eighty seven, so it's, it's a little bit rattly, and the suspension is quite hard. Yeah. So whether that needs to be fettled or not, it's not sure about the aftermarket exhaust for me. Very true. Perhaps not that. You could sit and pit holes in it all day, but all you need to do is get on the throttle get that turbo kicking in and frankly it would all be forgotten and forgiven. This is lot number 52, Porsche 911 996 Mark 1 GT3. This is the first ever Porsche GT3 road car. It all started here. It's got a 3.6 litre legendary Metzger engine which delivers 360 brake horsepower. This car gets to 60 miles an hour in just 4.8 seconds. Guide price of this one is 65 to 75,000, which for a sort of 30,000 mile example is okay, but it does show how the values of these are holding up quite well. Most people think that the Gen 1996 is actually the one to have. Around about 1800 of these cars were made. Part of the reason why the values of these hold up so well is because they made twice as many of the Mark IIs. For me, the only thing that's a little bit of a downer is the colour. It's a very unusual orange. Here we have lot number 57, possibly my favorite out of the bunch. This is a Dodge Viper GTS. This is a 2001 car, priced at between 40 and 50,000. It's done 29 and a half thousand miles from new, and it is just glorious. Look at the blackness of this baby. This is an eight liter V10. It was obviously a cooperation between Chrysler and Lamborghini at the time. Remember, Chrysler owned Lamborghini, and this develops 450 brake horsepower. So, out of the cars that we're you know, we're driving today, this is quite possibly the most powerful car, right? Yep. And I'm looking forward to this because I actually drove one of these in the early 2000s. Really? Yeah. So I'm looking forward to reliving the memories. It's in Darth Vader black. Oh my not, God! He's so amazing. <laughs> not the official colour. It's got satin stripes on it, which are stickers but it's a proper murdered out 
Viper. <laughs> this is just the best car ever. Look at it. The only thing that isn't black on this car is the polished chrome fuel filler. Look at that. That is a V10. Oh, 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 oh yeah. Seatbelts are in the centre, people. Oh, clever, clever Americans. I reckon this is probably in my top five, maybe even top three of this entire auction, this car. I love this view as well because this is exactly the same view that you had in Need for Speed on the 3DO. Oh, love it. Good Look reference. at those. Look at the dials. First thing that strikes me. Yeah, it's how, how many times it beeps when you leave the door open. Oh my God, how many beeps? The door's ajar, we know. Yeah. I opened it. The Maybe. door's ajar. There you go. Oh, turn that off. Turn it off. The whole car is rocking when you do that. Yeah, oh. that's what it's supposed to do. Oh, you could get into a lot of trouble in this car. Oh, hello. I'm a little bit scared. You'll be fine. You'll be fine, I'm here with you. Are you sure? Yeah, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> oh my God! Oh my God! I mean, all I was doing was hanging on at that point. There was nothing else going on in my mind except keeping us alive. <laughs> that is amazing. Your turn. Oh! We're back. Come on. I mean, I, I should say be careful, but unfortunately, you're you. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a bonnet. I mean, look at the bonnetage on it. Yeah, I mean, there's so much power, you can get into serious, serious trouble. We're talking two and a half times the power of the Sierra Cosmo. <laughs> Beans? It's a lot. It's a lot it's of a money. Lot. It's a lot. It's, it's only done 29 and a half thousand miles, but it's an American car. It's left-hand drive. I think this one will struggle to get to that money. However, whoever does get it is, is I think, you know, a lucky a person. Yeah, I think in it's a good for car. A treat. Oh my god! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> oh yeah! Oh yeah! Let me out, let me out of this one. <laughs> Here we have lot number 61, another personal favourite of mine. This is a Talbot Sunbeam Lotus. These things are like hen's teeth. There are none of them around. They were pretty much all built for rallying. The guy that designed it was told he couldn't actually build a car, then built it in secret anyway until he got approval from the rally department. This thing is exceptionally special. So this car is a 1980s car. It's priced at 30 to 40,000, which I think is actually pretty good for what it is. It's only done 42,000 miles on its current engine. It's been fully restored. The engine's actually been taken out to 2.4 liters instead of the original 2.1. And it's been designed and built to be more of a grand tourer rather than an on the limit rev monster. So starting procedure. Because this is a racing car. Yes, it very, really is, isn't it? It's yeah, oh, totally yeah, yeah. stripped out. We've got a little red dongle thing there, which is probably some battery cut battery off. Battery cut off, thing. so we turn that on. Oh, look at the little quartz clock as well. Quartz clock, um, all a bit manoeuvring. Oh, it's a lumpy old thing, isn't it? That is a race engine, all right. Woo! Wow, pull cords. Feels rattly, cage in the back, spare wheel behind you. Lovely, nothing I mean, but space behind us. This, look look this. signatures, signatures. Racing signatures is a, in, the, in the roof. Wow, Phil Davidson, he's the guy who did the engine. Russell Brooks. He's a famous rally driver. Is he? Oh. It's not exactly Ari Vatanen, is it? Right, the other thing, consideration, bearing in mind this is a racing car. Yeah. Dog leg first. Is it? Excellent. Dog leg first, like all proper racing cars should Just be. Just like the F40. Oh, 1980 yeah. this is. 
Is it? Yeah. 1980. This is exactly when they first built these, just before they started winning the rallies. The Phil Davison is the guy that, that built, redid the engines. He used to do the rally engines. Oh, in the wow, day. really? And he did this one And he well. did this one? Yeah, and he, so he signed the car. How cool is that? So this clearly, then, is a proper, proper piece of kit. This yeah. is not just a recreation. This car has been fettled by the correct people. This one's rated up to 250 brake horsepower. I love it, this, aren't you? I'm loving this. It. Is, I really is, am loving it. This is like a little tiny boy, Jason, fulfilling a dream. Oh, right now. this is so good. Thank you, Bonhams MPH, for, yes, uh, thank for you making so much. this face. Oh, 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 oh. There's some means right there. Oh my god. We're on a rally stage. It's 1980. Oh my god almighty. I honestly think Jason has just emitted <laughs> some some liquid. Are you alright? <laughs> oh my god. Look. <laughs> oh my word. What, what, whatever the price of this car is, it's, it's worth bought. it. It's bought. Properly quick, isn't it? That's amazing. Come on, old that, school horsepower. You cannot beat that. Yeah, that is properly quick. It's worth it. Okay, so this is the thing. This is the pick of the auction. Shh, don't tell anybody else. Just between you and me, right. and, and maybe him, yeah. right? This is it. This is the scoop. Forget everything else. This. This. Hoped that it was going to be good. I hoped that it was going to be good, but that is a whole new level of good. Here's the problem: uh, we're telling you that this is the car of the auction, and you and you need to bid on this hard. However, it's not actually going to be in the auction because we're going to because we're going to buy it. it. <laughs> yeah. This is a properly, properly, properly. That's three properly. Three properly. Special machine. Lot number 62 is this gorgeous limited edition Volkswagen Corrado VR6. One of my personal favourites, one of my little guilty pleasures. It's one of those ones that I keep an eye out for on Auto Trader or auction sites just like this for just something like this to turn up. This is a 1992 car and its guide price is between 28 and 35,000 pounds, which I think possibly a little bit toppy, but uh, we'll take you around the car and see what you think. Now this is the VR6 campaign, so only six of these cars were ever made. It's believed that only four remain. It's got this lovely metallic purple paintwork. It's got a 2.9 litre V6, the legendary VR6 engine, and that gave 0 to 60 in 6.7 seconds. The top six best-selling Volkswagen dealers 
got one of these campaign cars. Now inside they've got a little secret which is the quite striking terracotta interior. So this is a very individual colour, I think is the kindest way to describe terracotta. <laughs> I mean, I was really excited about this car and then I saw the interior picture and I went, ah. Mm -hmm. But it is very rare and so you would Yeah, be... it's got a terracotta interior, <laughs> of course it's rare. <laughs> no wonder they only made six. But look. Oh, oh. yes, purple insets <laughs> on the seats. Purple, purple insets on the seats. That's amazing, look at that. It's like people running and like some kind of Olympic theme. And this particular car was awarded to Dovercourt at St John's Wood and it still features the original tax disc from the date in the windscreen. VR6 campaign. VR6 obviously very special. Very special. I've never driven one. Oh! Ever. But I've lusted after them in the classifieds. How's the gear shift? Quite a long throw, I would say. It's a little bit lollopy. It's a bit uh, slushy. A bit chipolata in the Albert Hall, kind of. <laughs> it's a bit like that. Throwing a sausage down the high street. <laughs> but I have to say, I am loving that Carmen badge. Yeah, exactly. Built with their I factory. I mean, just Come owning on. a car with a Carmen badge on it is just worth it. Every penny, isn't it? Bit into the first corner. Whoa! Oh, stiff. Handles it quite well. Steering weights up incredibly when you go into a corner. It really does. Very firm yeah. suspension, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, lovely oh, sounding. Lovely little roar, isn't it? Nice. I have to say, it turns in a lot keener than the Viper. <laughs> <laughs> so the engine's been completely rebuilt on this car and it is really free revving. It's properly smooth. It's got a lovely growl at the top end. You can feel it's got quite a lot of torque to it as well. Yeah. Does it feel like it's overwhelming the front wheels with all that torque? Let's find out, shall we? Oh, that's it. That's the stuff. Yeah, I mean, no, it tucks yeah. in nicely. It actually copes with it really well. Some beans? Some beans. Come on, let's have it. Oh, it's quite a nice roar to it. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's useful amount of power, isn't it? Into the corner, look. Just handles it. I think, No yeah, drama if, whatsoever. If you're looking to pick yourself up a, a, a really good hot hatch that you can have a lot of fun in, you'd be mad not to be bidding on this, wouldn't you? Yeah, I think this is a, this is a good one. It's very rare. It's a great car anyway. Let's be honest, people of our age, this is the Magnum Ferrari. Or is it? This actual car isn't the Magnum Ferrari not because it's not a GTS, but because this is actually the 208, which means it's only got a two litre V8, because back in the day, Italians were taxed heavily on the size of the engines. So Ferrari produced a much smaller engine version so that Italians didn't have to pay a load of tax. So although this is probably one of the most unloved Ferraris being a two litre V8, it is gonna be very, very rare. There can't be that many out there. There can't be that many still running. So do you know what? Maybe this is all right. So here we have lot number 83, a fantastic 2001 Beetle RSI, limited to only 250 versions. Nothing says crazy limited edition sports car than spoilers, and we've got two massive spoilers for you. This one in particular, I've used trays smaller than this to carry beer from the pub. Don't forget the massive exhaust pipe sticking out the back of this as well. It's a reimagined Volkswagen Golf in a nice dress, but look at the crazy orange seats. Just look at them. Who would have orange seats in a car? Me, me. But the main thing about this car is the body kit. Look at the state of it. Bulges, bulges, it's flipping massive in all areas. It's the most outrageous Beetle that's ever been made. So here we are, this is the first time I've ever been in an RSI. What about you? It's the first time I've ever been in a modern Beetle, ooh, let alone ooh, an RSI. Ooh. Come and, on. And what a way to start. Oh, hello. See, it corners quite well, actually. Well, it's not bad, is it? I mean, I wouldn't, it's not setting my hair on fire. <laughs> but we're not surprised because obviously it's, it's a VR6 and a VR6 is an, is an amazing car. Oh, very short footed, loving that. That four wheel drive, really can feel it, can't you? Pulling the car around, I yeah. think that's absolutely amazing. The only thing is the steering wheel is enormous. I mean, honestly, I know it's a steering wheel rant and I do apologize for that. Always about the steering well, wheel. I'm just saying it's enormous. So the, the ride is quite hard. 
but it is a super sport car. Yeah. It's a limited edition. You would be very pleased having this in the garage because it's a little bit quirky. It's yeah. a little bit funny. That's exactly what I was going to say, is it's the quirky end of the garage. You've got all these other supercars and hypercars, yeah. and then you've got one of these yeah. in the corner. shows you, you've got a fun love inside, yeah. but you also appreciate special cars like this. Limited cars yeah. that only the people in the know know about. You've got a sense of humour, right? Yeah. If you've got one of these, you've definitely got a sense of humour. I'm sort of loving this Cuban humidor interior. I know, it's it. amazing, isn't it? Yeah. That gives it the personality. I think if it was just normal and black in here, you wouldn't really care. No, I think you've got to have those extra quirky bits and the, and the quirkiness of the kind of, everything's got a, an exposed screw. Yeah. We've got very orange interior. Yeah. Um, I think all of that just adds to the, the theater of it. I mean, I didn't think orange and carbon fiber would go <laughs> quite so well as it does, but it kind of, it kind of works. Also, shift lights, ladies and gentlemen. It's oh, got yeah. shift lights. Oh yeah, it's got the shift light. What do we like about this car? I love the way it looks. I love the fact that it's got a proper engine in it. Yes. So it really does go. Yeah. I love the quirky interior. Yeah. I like the fact that there's a radio in the roof. What don't we like? I mean, rides a little bit harsh. It's a bit dated in here, but it is at least kind of of its time. I don't like the steering wheel, but meh. So overall, out of, the, out of the cars that we've got here at the auction, is yep. this going to is this going to tempt you? Oh yeah, definitely. This would definitely this be one of the ones that that I would be uh, be interested in. For yeah. me, it's probably not in my top five, Ooh. but I can sort of see the appeal. Whoever Massive. does get this car, it's going to be a very lucky boy. Very lucky boy or girl. We hope you enjoyed this special auction preview at the Bonhams MPH auction. I hope you enjoyed the video because we had an amazing day making it for you. Please don't forget to, wait, 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 we've got another bid coming in. Oh. Subscriber over there, <laughs> merchandise over there. You know what to do. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and ding that notification bell for when we have a next episode uploaded. And don't forget to check out the Car Guys merchandise. Available from our website or below this video in YouTube. Don't forget to leave comments underneath because we really appreciate and we read them all. And particularly for this video, we'd love to hear your feedback about this very special episode. There'll be another Car Guys episode along next week.